Hello and welcome to this demonstration of how to use Coachmaster software to help somebody give up smoking. My name is Bob Griffiths and I've created this series of videos to examine coaching issues and how Coachmaster can support coaches in real-time coaching situations. In this session we'll be working on helping somebody cut down or stop smoking. The question set has been specifically designed for that purpose. The principle behind Coachmaster is to make expert problem-solving processes available to less well-trained coaches and facilitators so they could use the processes to give high-quality sessions. To give you a bit of context, in the session I'm coaching a person we are calling Veronica. Veronica is French so some of her answers are not in perfect English. Before the coaching started I explained to her that I would be coaching and helping her develop her own solutions rather than advising her on how to stop smoking. We conducted the coaching using text, but the coaching can be done in several ways. As well as both sides using text, the software can be used as a guide for the coach while they're connected to the client by voice or video. In that situation, the coach might be asking the questions by voice and doesn't have a written copy of the client's answers. But the coach would normally keep a record of the summary of each stage so the client has something to agree or disagree with. There are advantages and disadvantages of each method of communication, but the key point is whichever method is chosen, both coach and client have to be comfortable with it. And that comes down to their personal considerations. For example, in this session, in the debrief afterwards, Veronica said she appreciated the chance to read the questions in English so she could be sure what she was being asked about. As with my previous videos, I will be showing you the features of Coachmaster and providing a commentary on the actual coaching just as it happened. I'm not holding myself up as a perfect coach. You will see where I felt I could do better as well as where the coaching worked. But you will be watching a live session pretty much as it happened. One of the features of Coachmaster is that it can be programmed with any sort of problem solving process according to the type of issue that's being dealt with. In this session we were following a question set based on the GROW coaching model. There are many good coaching models that could be used. For example, we've developed a model based on motivational interviewing principles. But GROW does have a lot of advantages, especially for coaches who are just starting out. Not least of which you can explain the process in terms of a journey. Where does the client want to get to? Where are they now? What's stopping them just going directly to their goal? How can they get around those obstacles? And what are they going to do next to put the options into operation? And you can see the GROW coaching model in this central panel. And you can see for each of the stages of GROW, there's certain subsections that we put in that are most relevant for that particular stage. So we start the session off by just sending a friendly greeting to Veronica and confirming what we're going to work on. I will show you what the client side looks like, but basically it's very similar to the coaches, except it doesn't have the question set. So Veronica tells me her goal is to have better health which is a perfectly valid goal, but this isn't exactly what I was looking for in terms of defining a clear goal for GROW purposes. So I ask her this clarifying question of how she would actually know that she had better health, and she comes back with the fact that she'd feel energetic and not stressed at being able to climb stairs without feeling out of breath. They seem all good goals, but I felt it was better to try and focus on one particular aspect of her health. So I asked her to focus on which was the most important to her. And she responds that feeling energetic would be the most important thing for her. So again, I try and focus her on some success indicators for her health goal and ask her what she'd actually be able to do that she couldn't do now in four to six months time. And she came back with the answer being pregnant. And while I could see where she was coming from, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So I tried a bit of humour. And then formulated a question, trying to get clarity on the connection between her feeling more energetic and being pregnant. And then she provided the clarity in that she wanted to become more healthy, that she, so she'd feel able to become pregnant. And then I provided a bit of clarity on what I understood to be the goal and then suggested a fairly clear goal which she was then ready to accept. I then reviewed these other sections of the 
goal stage, looking at uh, her personal motivations and whether the goal was properly formed, but decided we didn't really need to use any of those questions. I then checked with her if six months was the right time scale, and she came back with a revised time scale of four months. I was then able to use the summarization feature of Coachmaster to summarize her goal on this goal tab at the bottom right, and Veronica also saw that on her screen. So she was able to see that goal and agree that it was correct for her. We were then able to move on to the session goal stage of the process. And in the session goal, we define what the goal the client wants by the end of the session. And that's the description of what they'd actually like to have in their hand. So it's usually a plan for how to achieve the overall goal. And in this case, Veronica agreed that that was what she wanted, and I was able to paste it into the tab on the bottom right. We were then able to move on to the reality stage of the GROW process. The point of the reality stage for the coach is to discover what is currently going on for the client in terms of their current position in respect of their goal. So it's how many cigarettes is the client smoking at the moment, whether they've tried to give up before, what resources they have. Generally, information about the current position is incredibly useful for the coach to understand where the client is in relation to their goal. So I asked Veronica some basic questions about how much she smokes at the moment if she's tried to give up smoking in the past and what happened in those attempts. And Veronica provides me some very useful information about what happens when she usually tries to give up. I also ask her about what uh, stop smoking aids she's tried to use or what services she's accessed in order to build up a full picture of what she's tried in the past and how effective it's been. As you can see, the information that's included in this particular system is based on the UK model, but the information could quite simply be transferred to another model for another country if that was appropriate. Veronica gives me the information that she's had a fair bit of uh, support of various kinds, but obviously it hasn't been completely effective as yet. I was interested what uh, resources Veronica might have that would help her in her goal of cutting down or eliminating smoking. So I use this section on current resources about what skills, knowledge or personal qualities the person might have that might be useful to them in this particular stage of the process. Veronica came back to me with the statement that um, she was sometimes stubborn and I wondered if that quality might be useful in terms of helping her stick to a plan. One of the interesting areas to investigate in almost any coaching situation is if the person is doing anything positive that is currently working for them in terms of achieving their goal. But Veronica comes back to me and tells me that she sometimes doesn't smoke when she's sick and sometimes she avoids cigarettes in the day, but that's about all. So I thought I had enough information to summarise what I thought was the current reality, which I pasted into the tab, and asked Veronica what she thought about it. Which is always a good coaching move to check in with the client to see if they're happy with what you're summarising. Veronica comes back and tells me that she saw it as tough but manageable, and I took that as a positive sign that she was engaged in the process and could start to see a way through and we were then ready to move on to the obstacle stage. So I start the obstacle stage with this simple general question about what Veronica knew already about what's blocking her from giving up smoking. And Veronica replied with some very useful information about her identity as a smoker and also the fact that she tends to use cigarettes to give herself a break or to deal with stress. And I took that as an opportunity to identify one particular block of using cigarettes to deal with stress as something we could note and deal with later in the options section. 
and Veronica agreed that that was definitely an obstacle. If you have a look at the question set that's built into the obstacle section, you'll notice that we build in sections of coach advice into each area. So one of our important bits of advice in the obstacle stage just once will very rarely produce the full picture that you're looking for. So we encourage the coach to ask the what else question more times than once to allow the client to really consider what obstacles there might be between them and their objective. Veronica then comes back with an answer of the habits and I have some idea of what she might mean but I'm not totally clear. So I go to the clarification section which is built into every section of Coachmaster and in the clarification section you can find answers to clarify unclear words the client might use based on NLP principles. And Veronica then gives me some useful information about her habits of having a cigarette after dinner or a treat cigarette after meetings. This might be quite a useful point to just look at the help section which you'll also find at every stage and the help section is for the coach that if they find themselves stuck in a session we provided these facilitative type questions which they can use to help move the session on without the client or the coach necessarily feeling blamed or frustrated it is a support for the coach so that if they find themselves stuck they have a way of moving forward without getting too frustrated or blaming the client for the situation. We then look at this section marked beliefs versus facts to discern some more information about what Veronica tells herself before she has a cigarette that she regards as a treat to see if there would be another way of actually dealing with that situation without having a cigarette. I then summarise the obstacles that we've observed so far and ask Veronica if she agrees with them. I choose to take the opportunity to review the questions on the environment or resources obstacles which are all about what the client might lack that could cause an obstacle or whether other people are causing an obstacle to the client achieving their objective. And as you can see, I decide to try one of these questions here about whether there's anybody else involved that might be making the challenge harder. Veronica tells me there isn't anybody who's involved in making the challenge harder. So I decide to check with a question from this section about resources or information or support that she might need to actually help her achieve her goal. Veronica comes back with the answer that she might need some support and skills and I ask her what skills specifically that she might need. I interpret her answer that she might need support in sticking with her decision in the long term and making the first step of giving up smoking, which didn't seem exactly to be skills to me but still could be useful information. I then summarise the obstacles and ask Veronica if there's anything she wanted to add and she gives me confirmation that it's all true. I then summarise the obstacles on the obstacles tab and as you can see what this gives you in Coachmaster is a clear separated out list of obstacles that the coach can see are actually obstructing the client getting from where they are to their final goal of giving up or reducing smoking. What this means in the next section when we come on to obstacles is the coach has in front of him or her a clear list which they can take one at a time and break it down and looking at each obstacle in turn to discover options around it so the client has a way of dealing with each of the obstacles that is obstructing them. You might notice that I try and keep the conversation with Veronica with a light tone, telling her when we're moving on and making appropriate comments around what she says to encourage the feeling that this is a interpersonal interaction and not just somebody working through a process. 
I think it's one of the key elements that's often missed in training and coaching using virtual methods. The fact that you need to help the other person feel that there's a human being that's interacting with them and it's not just somebody clicking and sending questions which could be done by a computer. So I asked Veronica which of the obstacles she'd like to take first and she comes back with not having any options to deal with stress. I attempt to help her think of some resources of how she could actually find out about resources to deal with stress, but she comes back and tells me that she doesn't know about any other resources for dealing with stress and not smoking. I then encourage her to think about how she could find out, but she comes back with a slightly ambivalent answer saying maybe with homeopathy or with better habits which to me seemed to indicate that she wasn't really engaged or hadn't really thought about the question I was asking. I then suggested a fairly obvious suggestion of looking on Google for how she might find some answers and she responded with what I would describe as a yes but answer that she couldn't find the right answer because she gets so many responses. So I tried another tack of asking her if she knew somebody who handled stress well that she could use as an example. She responded that her husband was ha someone who handled stress well and then I suggested that she could use him in the nicest way to, as an example, to help her get through points of stress. And then she came back with what I would describe as another yes but response that if she asked him too often he was going to get fed up which I then gently challenged by asking her if that was actually correct. And I think she got slightly annoyed by her response that I was challenging her thinking a little. And she told me that her husband tends to eat while he's stressed, so I suggested that she didn't copy that. And then she challenged me a bit that she wasn't sure where we were going with the discussion. And I tried to reassure her that we were moving to actions and that the first action might be to speak to her husband. One of the advantages of using text is that it gives you the opportunity to refer to other resources. So while I was having the discussion with Veronica and she was typing one of her responses, I took the opportunity to do a little research myself on Google and came up with a simple exercise that she could try that would enable her to deal with stress through a body scanning method and she responded more positively that she actually liked the method and I felt some commitment to actually trying it. I was feeling then that we'd built a little momentum so I asked about the other situations that caused her stress or where she wanted to relax with a cigarette about what she could do with them. She then fairly quickly came up with herself the idea of replacing the deserved cigarette with a coke or something else but saying that the relaxing cigarette was more difficult to replace. I tried to build the momentum a bit more by asking her if she had any ideas of how she could support herself when she wanted to relax. She then pretty quickly came back with the answer that she didn't have any ideas, which again felt like a bit of a block to me. So I reviewed these sections on other solutions, what resources she might need, personal change and motivation, to see if I could get any ideas of how to find a way through this particular issue for her. In the end, I came back to this idea of asking her if she'd ever been able to relax in the past without a cigarette, to see if I could put her into a more resourceful state to remind her that sometimes it has been possible for her to actually be able to relax without the crutch of a cigarette. And she responded that at weekends and on holidays it had been possible for her. So I suggested that she might try and imagine she was on holiday or at the weekend before she had a cigarette. And she did agree that that might be a path that was worth trying. I was then interested in the area of support because she specifically mentioned that she didn't have enough support uh, in her obstacles. So I started to frame some questions around how she could actually create some more support for herself. 
and I hadn't got very far in the past by asking very open questions, so I suggested to Veronica that she might ask her friends for some support, and she came back with, yes, that they could send some messages of support to her. Then, as in the previous stages, I summarised the options and asked Veronica if there's anything she wanted to add. And she told me that she was happy with what we'd developed. So I then explained that we were going to take each option and move it into action steps and asked her firstly when she was going to talk to her husband and how she was going to remind herself to have something else rather than a cigarette and she came back with the answer of not rolling a cigarette before and I thought this was a partial answer but it seemed at this stage in the process it was probably better to accept it and then in the next session check in about how it was working. I then asked her about the body scanning method, how she was going to use that. And she came back with some fairly clear timings about how and when she was going to use that. I then asked her the specifics of who and when she was going to ask for support. And she came back with a list of people and said she was going to ask them really soon. And again, that's not totally clear coaching goal, but it felt clear enough at this stage of the process. I then asked her if there was anything else that would be helpful, as I have in all the previous sections, to see if the client can add anything more to the point where the coaching had arrived at. And she told me there was nothing more she could add, but she found the session very interesting and helpful. I then summarised the actions on the Way Forward tab and used the drop-down menu above the Send button to automatically send the summary to Veronica and myself. This is another good feature of using text or partial text coaching in that the summaries can be automatically sent to everybody in the session. I felt that I'd achieved what I wanted to, Veronica, without going through these additional sections. But as you can see, there are sections within the process for looking at support that the client might need. Whether they've thought through the consequences of their actions that they were fully committed to carrying them out and going through all the completion steps to ensure the session was completely finished. There are also sections for the client to reflect about what they've learned during the session. Then there is the section for the coach to reflect on what they have learned through running the session and how they could apply those skills in future sessions. These are for the coach's own reflection and not necessarily meant to be shared with the client. And finally, we take a look at the client's screen. And as you can see, it is very similar to the coach's screen on the left. But on the right, the client just sees the session being built up stage by stage, which gives them the opportunity to reflect on each of the stages and ensure that the coach has properly understood where they are for each stage. And that's really all the main points I wanted to make about using Coachmaster when helping people with stopping smoking. Exactly the same principles would apply if you're working with any other type of addiction or negative behavior that a client wanted to work on. As I say, the principle is that you don't have to have any fixed problem solving process, but you choose the one that is likely to be most effective for that client in that situation. If you have any questions about how to work with addictions or would like to try Coachmaster for yourself, then my contact details will appear in the next slide and please feel free to get in touch. Thanks for watching.